Welcome to Data Demystified. I'm Jeff Gallick, and this is my series of tutorial videos on how to use SPSS to work with data. In this video, I'm going to show you how to conduct and interpret a one-way ANOVA that includes covariance. As always, we'll be using the YouTube Viewing Habit survey that I created, and you can find both a link to the data file and a video tutorial of the data below. I've already largely covered how to conduct an ANOVA, which is an analysis of variance, in a separate video that I'll link to below. And I strongly encourage you to watch that previous video before watching this one if you're not already familiar with how to do an ANOVA. So I'll only quickly go through those mechanics. But what I really want to focus on here is the C piece, the ANCOVA, or the analysis of covariance. The idea is that we can conduct an ANOVA analysis while controlling for the variability of a different variable. In essence, what we want to see is if a variable has an influence on a different variable while partialing out whatever variation might exist in some third or fourth or fifth variable, all of which we'll call covariance. Just like when I showed you the ANOVA tool in the other video, I'm going to use the general linear model here because it allows me for a much more robust interpretation and analysis of what I'm trying to do. So first, let's recreate that analysis from the first video, and then we'll add a covariate to see what happens. So under Analyze, General Linear Model, Univariate, we're going to predict the average opinion. So this is the average opinion that people hold of YouTube. And we're going to use minute watch, which is a categorical variable of how many minutes people watch YouTube on any given day as our fixed factor. I'm going to select some of my other options that I always pick. So for instance, under post hoc, I'm going to ask for the Bonferroni corrected comparisons. Under EM means, I'm going to move everything over and display the means for everything. And this will be actually really useful in our covariate analysis because these means will then be estimated at the mean level of the covariate. And for now, that's actually all I'm going to include. So I'm going to click OK. And if you watch the previous video, you'll see that, in fact, this looks exactly the same. We have a significant result. There's a difference in the average opinion as a function of minute watched. That's all categorized down here in our Bonferroni corrected comparisons. And importantly, here are our means. But now let's say I want to go above and beyond this, and I want to say not just is there a difference, but I want to say is there a difference that's also explained above and beyond any variation that might exist in, say, something like the age of the respondent. In other words, I might have some hypothesis that says age is really what's driving all of these differences, and I want to say, hey, you know what, above and beyond any variation that might exist in age, can we see the same type of difference in average opinion as a function of minutes watched? So to do that, we go back up to Analyze, General Linear Model Univariate, and in this box covariate, I'm going to go ahead and add age. That's actually all I have to do. The only thing worth pointing out is we can no longer have our post hoc tests because those in fact aren't available to us when we're including a covariate. I'll now go ahead and click OK. So the first thing to notice is that we have an extra row of data in our table. We've got this variable age. And as it happens, age is in and of itself a significant predictor of average opinion. In other words, those two variables are related to one another. But what's worth pointing out is even when I include this covariate, even when I include age in our model, minute watch is still a significant predictor of average opinion. In other words, those means that we saw before, they're different even above and beyond any variation that exists in age in our data set. And in particular, what we can look at here are our estimated marginal means. And if we look at this tiny little footnote right down here, it says the covariate appearing in the model are evaluated at the following values age equals 38.6099, that is the average level of age. So these means are now adjusted for the fact that there was some variability in age in our data set, and the differences we see here in these means are now above and beyond any such variation in age. What's also worth pointing out is we can include more than just one covariate if we think that that's relevant. So if we go back to analyze general linear model univariate, Let's say that age is not the only thing we want to control for as a covariate, but we also want to include the number of channels that someone subscribes to. We might want to include that as a covariate. Click OK, and now we can re-examine this. Now what we find is that age is still a significant covariate, channel subscribed is also a significant covariate, but minute watch is still a significant predictor of this average opinion variable, even above and beyond any variation that exists in these previous two. And we can further scroll down to our estimated marginal means, and now you'll see that it's controlling for the average value of both of these variables in predicting what these means are. So this is the moment in the video where I ask you to pause and try this yourself. And in particular, what I'd like you to do is see if this variable importance creator actually is also predicted by minutes watched. And if we include the covariate, what the video is about, do we still see a significant result? So I'm going to go ahead and let you pause the video and give it a try, and I'll do it when you return. Hopefully you've gone ahead and done that. So I'm going to go ahead and go up to Analyze, General Linear Model, Univariate. I'll reset this just so we're starting from scratch. 
And as I said, we're going to stick with this question of minute watch as our fix factor. We're going to see if we can predict importance creator, meaning how important the creator is. Is that different as a function of how much people watch YouTube? And if we include the covariate, what this video is about, does that still show us an effect or not? So I'm going to include covariate under EM means. I'm going to move these over so we see our estimated marginal means. And that's about all I want for the moment. So if we run this, we find that minute watch is a significant predictor of how important it is who the creator is. And importantly, that is above and beyond any variation that exists in importance about, meaning what the video is about, which itself is a significant predictor. We see that our means are down here. And again, those means are adjusted for any variation that might exist in importance about. So ANCOVA, or analysis of covariance, is a useful addition to our tool ANOVA, but allows us to control for variation of other variables and see if, if we still see a result above and beyond the variation that may have been explained by that other third or fourth covariate variable. That's it for this video. I hope you found this useful, and if you have any questions, please comment below, and I'll be sure to reply as quickly as I can. Aside from these tutorials, I'm on a mission to equip everyone with the information they need to thrive in our data-rich world. If you'd like to learn not just the mechanics of analysis, which these video tutorials focus on, but also learn the intuition behind the analysis you're performing, I strongly suggest you check out the other intuition-focused videos on this channel where I take the jargon out of statistics and data science and help you build a deep, intuitive understanding behind all the analysis that you're performing. I'll put a link below to a playlist of the videos that focus on just this. Finally, please take a moment to like the video, subscribe to this channel, and click that little bell icon so that you don't miss out on any new content that I put out. Thanks for watching.